And when you need these, uh, remember to put this little switch all the way up the board. And actually, I think Oh, I'm sure. I don't want to do Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants, I stand here before you to tell you something I know nothing about. Welcome to the Sacred Grounds Open Mic Cafe. Um, hello, 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 everybody. Excuse me, we're on. We're on TV, so you can all quiet it down for now. So welcome to the Sacred Grounds. I am your host, Mr. Natural. We are being broadcast live on Ustream, and then later on in the month, it goes over to YouTube permanently. So those of you who are archiving your uh, performances, you can go find them at a place called Music by Interval. And if you want to email someone right now to tell them that you're on live, the URL is right there on the wall. The important thing about that URL is that the A, E, and Z are capitalized. If they're small letters, these will not work. So it has to be capitalized. Um, this is being sponsored by the Sacred Grounds Cafe. And the Sacred Grounds Cafe is pleased to announce that they have bought the pizzeria, Panhandle Pizzeria, next door. So you can go next door now and you can buy a pizza or hamburger or beer or get stuff like that if you wish. Uh, so, first of all, tonight, our feature is going to be Kayla and Kevin, Kayla Marin and Kevin North, for those of you who have seen them here in the past. We're really excited about their doing a half hour for us of just jumping and jiving and jamming and having a good time. Okay, after their performance for this first half hour, after that we will then, uh, we will then open it up to the regular open mic. We have three rules around here, and these rules are very important. Everybody, the first rule is, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Not funny, I mean that, seriously. If you have to have a conversation, remember that you are squancing the person up here out of getting their camera, uh, getting their performance recorded without you interfering. So we have these chairs and tables outside. If you go outside, you can have your conversation, and you will not interfere with the performance. If you need to whisper for a short time, that's fine. But if you keep coming in on my camera, I will come over and grab you by your ear and say, please stop or get out, okay? This is about the performance here. This is the only open mic where we actually listen to people. And I'm proud of that. We've been doing it since 1973 and we'd like that to continue. The second rule, do not play along with the artists or play in between sets. You may be better than them and you'll screw them up. We get a lot of beginners here because it's a safe place, it's a safe haven. And we try to create that little womb-like experience so they'll feel comfortable about coming out. A lot of these artists have never played anywhere else before. So it's really important that if they ask you to play along, please play along. But if not, the default is listen carefully and give them all the emotional support you can. And for me, the third and most important rule besides shut the fuck up is if you hear something you do not like or do not understand, applaud anyway. Okay? We call it manners. Manners. Strange thing, this social lubricant called manners, where we are all oppressed evenly so the playing field is flat. Okay? So that's how we do things here at the Sacred Grounds. So without further delay, for the next half hour, please welcome to the stage, Kayla and Mr. North, Kevin North.
Dishes crashing, Matt is crying on the floor, Jim is screaming, and all he sees is red, 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 red.
And this one's Love On Me. Won't you go home this time? Won't you go whenever I come? You have to walk you 
Kayla and Kevin, ladies and gentlemen. We're so lucky Kayla came in here one night and did a little singing and we've been encouraging her to come back and her and Kevin got hooked up and then Kevin brought some other friends of his and he's come by and done some solo stuff. We're really lucky to have this whole side of Kevin's family, ladies and gentlemen. So let's give it up to them one more time. Got to get her car out of the red zone. <laughs> She's got to get her car out of the red zone. It was just long enough for her not to get a ticket. That's the nice thing here on Hay Street, folks, is the police do not go down this block that often, so if you want to park on the street, you can, actually. But it, it's hell after 7 o'clock to find parking around here. So this is the part where we start the rest of the open mic. For every, excuse me. Excuse me. This is the part where we start the rest of the open mic for the rest of you. Now, since most of the audience members will be coming up here and performing, I expect you to use the same good behavior I've just seen from you all. Thank you very much for paying attention. We are archiving this for the artists, so we do like to give them uh, an opportunity to get the very best uh, recording that uh, our lousy camera and this uh, really terrible modem <laughs> that we have here can produce. Uh, we were actually sending video out. We were sending video out for several years before we found out that we were doing it on the telephone line and had no modem. It was amazing that we got a low low res signal out of here. And just a couple weeks ago, we finally got a modem installed, and it seems to be doing better. Now we can get through a whole show without the camera crashing. And we're going out in high res now, ladies and gentlemen. So right now, I'd like to read some of the features that will be coming up here very soon. So we all just saw Kevin North and Kayla. Uh, next week is a poet by the name of Robert Smith. Now this is the first time, I'm sorry, I just can't compete with you. I just can't, I just can't do it. Um, so uh, next week we are having our first poet laureate who will be coming here and doing a half hour of his poetry. This guy, Robert Smith, is big in the poetry world. He's been coming to the open mic on Wednesday night for the last 40 some odd years. He has worked with other people, he's taught poetry, he's worked with some of the greatest poets in uh, the history of San Francisco. So please, please, I'm excited about this. It's the first time we've got a wordsmith to come here and do a half hour for us. So those of you who love poetry. Now, September 4th, you saw him a couple weeks ago, he'll be back, okay? Connor Coglin, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember that night, we were packed with ladies. I've never seen so many women in this place before. I mean, we had like 65 people in here and we can only hold 44. So it was literally standing room only. So you do want to come and see this guy or at least tune in on the internet to watch him. He come all the way from England. Connor is resident in London, of all places, and he's come here to do his thing. He's been traveling around California, up and down the coast here to uh, show off his wares. And he will be, after September 4th, he will be going back to London. And we will not see him for about another year or so. So well worth it. And then after that, on September the 11th, is uh, Noura and Yannick. Uh, Noura with two O's, I don't know how to say that. Noura and Yannick. Uh, uh, guy and gal, kind of folky music, interesting. And then after that on the 18th will be Joshua. Joshua plays dulcimer, for those of you who have any idea what it is. He plays dulcimer, does it the good old fashioned folk way, and uh, he'll be coming. And then on the 25th of September, Vina B. Now, Vina B comes about once a year because she travels all over the country. So this will be her, this will be her yearly. I just got a poster from her the other day and she's now just reached California. So she'll be coming up the coast, and we'll be seeing her on September 25th. That's as far as I'll go with those announcements. So now this is where we start the open mic. Again, first rule, shut the fuck up. We're trying to record this for posterity, it's for the artist, okay? Second rule is, do not play along with them unless they ask you to. If they ask you to, like Johnny Hernandez will come up here and say, please sing along, then give it 110%. Otherwise, try not to throw the artist off. And if they screw up, applaud. You know, support them. Be nice. Okay? And the third rule is, if you hear something you don't understand or don't like, applaud anyway. Applaud anyway. 
The idea is to let these people leave stage feel like they've accomplished something. That's how we get beginners to come back again and again and again. And frankly, if we didn't have that kind of atmosphere, we probably wouldn't be seeing Kevin North and Kayla, frankly, ladies and gentlemen. They've fallen in love with, that, with us as much as we have with them because we try to make this a good venue for artists, okay? Uh, Ruby, Rudy, you'll be up next, so get ready right now, obviously. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is I will go around and say that you're up next, and what I want you to do is get ready, tune up, and, and then come up on stage, do your thing, and then get off the stage. Please don't waste time coming up here, tuning up, and sending out emails to your friends, okay? The idea is do all that before you get up here. Every minute you waste up here, it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back, and then the artist at the end of the night can't get on, okay? So try to be as efficient as you can. I need to put some faces on uh, Mickey. Mickey, M-I-K-I. Mickey, where is she? She's outside. Oh, the girl outside that came with you? Okay. And I, who is I? There's an I. There is no I as an ego. No I, okay, so I'll cross I off. And Bennett. Oh yeah, there you are. Okay, Bennett. So what I'm gonna do is, Bring up a new person, and then a regular, a new person, a regular, a new person, and a regular, because the regulars always wind up signing up last. So this way I'll get you in a little bit earlier. So please, welcome to the stage. You have two songs or 10 minutes. 10 minutes maximum, that's punitive. If you do a one, you know, a 10 minute song, you'll only get one song, okay? So, welcome to the stage, Ruby. It's called hand boning. 
The oldest instrument that we know of in history were bugs. The first thing Aborigines did is they put beetles or bugs in front of their mouth, opened their mouth, and as the bugs flapped their wings, they were able to get a couple notes out of it, kind of like a kazoo. And then they put blades of grass and started playing blades of grass, and then later they started playing their body. And that's called hambone, ladies and gentlemen. Hambone. Go on the internet, type in hambone on YouTube, and see some of the most incredible patch clap things you've ever seen in your life. And especially from Japan and Korea, they really have the hambone thing down better than we do, even though it's an American invention. So up next, ladies and gentlemen, bring to the stage Johnny Hernandez. Sing a nice 
happy song genre. So do you want to go with the more poking around kind of genre or with the more la di da kind of? Sad poking around. Maybe not sad one. I don't have sad one here. No, I didn't sad one. Well, keep poking around. Can I do stick with that kind of stuff? Just keep poking okay. around. It's kind of Okay, so this fun. one's kind of visual, too, so you got to pay attention, okay? And those guitar players do oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. So you got to pay attention. Okay? And there's also a sing-along on this. Simple sing-along. Watch the left hand. If an instrument has strings, you may have noticed a strange thing as your fingers dance along, changing position. From the shapes they choose to make, one in particular takes the cake. It's not meant to be a slur, it's just that chord that flips the bird. There you go. Hey, if they're real chords, what can I say? Oh, the chord that flips the bird may not be seem rude while it's being heard. But once you realize, you can't help but wonder, does the musician also know what those deft fingers are choosing to show? Without a word, it's the chord that flips the bird. You never know. Let's sing along. It's the chord that flips the bird. 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 Silly ass. That's fun. What can I say? When it's something that you pluck, you might be saying, what the funny coincidences happen all the time. So when you see that middle finger looking just a bit absurd, don't be offended by the chord that flips the bird. Though it may seem to be aimed straight at you, it's truly innocent, there's nothing taboo. We've all discussed this, and it has been concurred by all the guitarists here. It's just the chord that flips the bird. Let's take it out. Here we go. It's the chord that flips the bird. 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 Johnny Hernandez, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny, we're going to have to send you across the street to the nail salon and have him paint a little face on that thing. <laughs> a little smiley face would do. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Calvary. Thanks, everybody. Oh, I have those headliners. Wow. I almost, uh, almost left. <laughs> Almost went home. Good stuff. This one's called The Tornado That Stole My Name. You can't tell the difference when you kiss them. Cause we both look just the same. But that man.
mean old twister Never tell a blast and just drops in on it It don't like it when it's quiet So it's any excuse for fighting with thunder and lightning It swoops on us from above To rip the hinges off our marriage And bring the whole roof down on us Needle. Don't go with family Don't blame yourself, love You ain't the cause It's my tornado I'm the one that feeds him It's my own damn fault When it drags me off to Oz Well, the mean old twister Never telegraphs, he just drops in on his body He don't like it when it's quiet So it's any excuse for fighting With thunder and lightning He swoops on us from above To rip the hinges off our marriage And bring the whole group down on us Mean old twister Never telegraphs, he just drops in on the body. You don't like it when it's quiet. So it's any excuse for fighting with thunder and lightning. It swoops on us from above. Rip the hinges off our marriage and bring the home. So, uh, anybody like dogs? Yeah. Okay, this is a song about dogs. It's a bad dog that frightens my kitty when she's hiding. I should save all my fighting. But the dogs of the days and It should be noted This dog is devoted Even when I'm loaded And my mind is slipping away Some dogs need to be rescued Where well, we might slip the leash sometimes But we'll always come home to you And I won't ask for nothing Some drums from your oven If I'm barking, can Steal a spot in your bed In return for your keeping I'll stand guard while you're sleeping And I'll howl when you're weeping And I'll chase away the ghost from your hand Some dogs need to be rescued Well, we might slip the leash sometimes We'll always come home to you But when I'm gone I never think you'll miss me if I'm wrong Baby, please forgive me, hold on 
Your dog will limp home before long This is doggy's opinion Death shall have no dominion Love's my lust to oblivion I don't care what they say Cause dogs finish what they started a loyal dog won't be parted And real dogs don't stay broken hearted For very long So it's okay Some dogs need to be rescued Well we might slip the leash will always come home to you, back home to you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Calvary, ladies and gentlemen, that was Calvary. And now I'd like to bring to the stage one of my favorite musicians and uh, absolutely a quintessential human being. He represents our, our hippie nation, Rainbow Lady. This is a serious song. It's called If the Bomb Comes for the Mother Earth. It off. There's a sweet girl. Some place in the world But don't you ever be a fool oh. This place is a cesspool Just take a look at the skin that you're living in. I thought that you might like to know. Oh. You're a living soul. I just can't understand all the violence in man. You say that you. If the bomb comes, there'll be no place left to hide. And the bomb, what it is worth, I love the mother. Yeah, if the 
Where's your Finnish accent? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. It, uh, there it is. is. Back there in Minnesota, is. you betcha. That's you. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Something special out of the 
got CDs of our first uh, original CD, copies of that, for five bucks, 13 original tracks. The album's called Trip Trap. And we have a demo with four original tracks and a live recording from Mutiny Radio, which we played last year. All right. This next song is going to be on the second CD. It's not on the demo yet. We have not yet recorded it. The song is called Wishing Tree. Dream. 
so far so good and we are moving right along and now it's starting to get to that point in the evening where we have to move things along a little bit quicker so I'm going to ask for all you closeted werewolves and all you vegetarian vampires and for all you demons vipers spiders and ooky stuff welcome to the stage the daughter of darkness lady zeitgeist
Yeah, please see her for any albums that you'd like to buy. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage somebody who I have missed. She has not been here for months. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Maria. Maria!
my favorite song. Thank you. I hope I can remember how to play it though. been here before let's give them a big round of applause Mikey Mickey Mickey, Mickey. Mickey. sorry it's your spelling Francisco. 
people just to chase her down. Hush to me said that she wants me around. So off I go out into I know. Cause in this gypsy heart I found a home. Now I'm leaving break apart. Cause the thought of her takes my lonely and off I go to find a new path. You and me, lady, we're gonna find brand new stars. The second one is gonna change, change my tune a little bit. It's called God of Fuck. It's my anthem. Also, it can be known as the Fuck It song. And here we go. I'm with you, I just want to fuck. I'm with you, I just want to fuck. I'm with you, I just want to fuck. Cause I'm the god of fuck. Fuck the world, fuck the flag. Fuck Vancouver, it's fucking cut. Fuck the system, fuck the man. Fuck you all, cause I swear I'm kidding. I'm with you, I just want to fuck. Cause Fuck for free and I'll leave you with this I'm not here to kiss your ass I got too much fucking class to say I don't know what you I just want fuck cause I'm the god of fuck <laughs> Now I'd like to bring to the stage Marsha Campbell please ladies and gentlemen Marsha Campbell. Older to 
what you feel. Daddy, what can I do? I'll never stop loving you. who's never been here before, a newbie, let's bring to the stage Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Bennett, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it from Bennett. This is Left footed 
rock, but I see better with my eyes shut To the lens of the man with the hands in the land That's how to take a stand left foot, right foot I see better with my eyes shut To the lies that they tried that behind Compromise my size, but I'm always gonna shine Left foot, right foot I see better with my eyes shut To the hate they create to get paid A black from the truth that was just one race our insides from the dark that I found to the consciousness that came out from the silence turned to thoughts and my thoughts became this sound but it added oh my thoughts became this sound left foot right foot I see better with my eyes shut to the lens of the men with their hands in the land. That's time to take a stand. Left foot, right foot. I see better with my eyes shut to the lies that they tried to behind. Compromise my size, but I'm always gonna shine. Left foot, right foot. I see better with my eyes shut to the hate they create to get paid. A blind from the truth that there is no race. Left. 
I've been waiting for the earth to quake, praise for the time it takes to shift the shape. Everything beneath the surface illuminated from inside a tower was a ghost as I reminded myself it's just a journey. It's just my journey. You believe you're worthy. Do I believe I'm worthy? Well, I believe I'm learning. Do I believe I'm worthy? Would you believe the world is burning down? Everything returning now. Put it back into the ground and watch it grow. All the seeds we planted, sown, harvested for pain we've known. I think that's what truth is. The rest is just illusions. Arrested and confused, yeah. But what you gonna do when we come for you? Singing, God is love, earth is heaven, good. And he was just a difference in perception. Ignorance is killing us. Truth is the medicine. You could be my enemy, but also call you my friend. Open up your eyes, come see like me. Open up your plans and damn, you're free. Look into your heart and you'll find love, love, love. Open up your eyes and you could see. We're just one big family. And it's our God who's taking right to be love, love, love. Open up your eyes, come see like me. Open up your plans and damn, you're free. Look into your heart and you'll find love, love, love. Open up your eyes and you could see. Oh, we're just one big family. And it's our God who's taking right to be love, love, love. Yeah, love is a solution, don't get it deluded. Politics is talking shit and making it confusing. It's useless, confusing, material clues to separate ourselves and define our value. When there are people are going hungry, children feeling lonely, and I'm supposed to give a shit about taxes on the wealthy. Help me, <laughs> tell me what to do. My body is a vessel, a reflection of the truth. Open up your eyes, come see like me. Open up your plans and damn, you're free. Look into your heart and you'll find love, love, love. Open up your eyes and you could see. We're just one big family. And it's our God to say we have to be love, love, love. Yes, I'm a small boy, but I've got a big heart. To get my voice back with my people, all of us created equal. And I'm just trying to play my part behind this guitar. Yeah, yeah. Singing songs of salvation, free myself of self hatred. is the medicine you could be my enemy but i'll still call you my friend open up your eyes come see like me open up your plans and damn you're free look into your heart and you'll find love 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 open up your eyes and you could see we're just one big family and it's our god forsaken right to be love 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 thank you so much Thank you so much, Bennett. Please, please come and see us again. Okay, now for my little brother with the biggest damn voice that you've ever heard, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Ryan Casada. so cold and got his last video he did the ice dump thing in New York I'm in not New York contributing to the draft don't yeah, worry. Right, yeah. <laughs> um all right uh, this song is going to be on my next record that is coming out sometime in uh, hopefully in our future Lost, cause you can't be 
Hey, Brian Casado. I got two free shows coming up. Uh, one is this weekend at a block party at uh, Lion and Grove, I think. Um, free, free block party. Come down, come chill. There's like a bounce house, you know. And on uh, next Saturday, August 30th, I think that's Saturday, I'm playing at the Vila Rouge Cafe, uh, which is like in walking distance of here. So you should come down. It's at 7 o'clock, and it's also a free show, and it's like, I think, two or three hours of music, so come stop by. All right, thank you so much. Put your hands together for Ryan Casada. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage a poet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Buford. Dedication. Thank you, thank you. This is called preschool. I was tired of big kids and wondered if I wanted to have a baby with a nice woman. During that summer, I substituted at the nursery school, a preschool that shared space with a movie theater. The movie screen was above a kindergarten classroom. It was strange to look up and see the screen as one struggled with these little kids but it was interesting. I met a woman there who would turn out to be a significant other for me for about a year. Evelyn was good for, with the kids and it was great to work with someone I became very fond of. She and I wound up spending a couple of nights together every week, either at her apartment or mine, which we're walking distance from each other in the 24th Street and Mission area. I wanted a more serious love relationship with this woman who was my older sister's age at about eight years older than I am, yet she was both bisexual and perhaps preferred women and not particularly interested in a big relationship, which I obviously was. I, she was and is a nice woman, but she was a hard sell. <laughs> in, my, in my younger man role, I talked her into the relationship. She became my only relationship after a few years of fooling around with more than one woman in the late 70s. There was a serious attempt at love uh, for me. She went to poetry readings, to movies, to restaurants everywhere with me. I really liked it when she spent the night, but it always seemed hard to talk her into coming over. So I remained open to another relationship, a serious long tip and a serious long-term relationship ran into me. This is called, this next part is called Parkside Again. Parkside Nursery School seemed to be uh, uh, a good place for meeting significant relationship candidates, and it happened again. This time on a non-paid break from my new job at Sunset Nursery School, where I worked with two to five-year-olds and the parents who were required to work one day a week. This was a demanding job and the time off for spring break was needed. Not getting paid, though, during this time was a problem. I went back to Parkside to see if I could substitute during this break, so that's what I did. When I came into a break room there to have some food, a woman was sitting there looking directly at me. She had this magnificent long reddish-brown hair about halfway down her back. I'm Karen, she said, extending her hand to me. My name is Buford Bunton, I told her. I'm a substitute. I know, she said, smiling with 
an extremely attractive overbite. <laughs> You're a sight to my room. We kept eating. I chewed on a hamburger from the school lunch, but I am so hot right now. I, I, kept, I kept looking up at her as she ate and kept her eyes on her food. Later in her classroom, I sat on the rug as she sent students over <laughs> and asked me to read books to them. I read for about half an hour, and then it was time for me to go to another class. So, you want me to come out of your class? I asked her when it was time. Her high cheekbones glistened in the streaming, uh, streaming in mid-morning light. She approached me. I had on these silver suspenders and she snapped. <laughs> I think I like you being straight. Mm -hmm. You are straight, aren't you? She smiled. I nearly fainted, but I managed. Yes, I am. <laughs> I came out of her class for a while. Uh, this next part, I, I got a little more time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Summer at Parkside. I finished out the year at Sunset Nursery School, learning sometimes painfully at Sunset. A parent who was a children's songwriter and a singer for a living asked me if I wanted to come back to Sunset for the following school year. Yes, definitely, was my answer. He seemed funny about it. Like he doubted my ability, but the consensus among parents who controlled the center was that I'd come back. I did small group arts and crafts and led an entire music time where, though I can't sing, but I am enthusiastic in these situations, and did things like Woody Guthrie's children's songs which the more yuppie of the parents criticized. <laughs> the hippie parents, though, the man with long hair and a beard and two kids, loved me. I came back for a second year. Okay, I want to go back to the love stuff, so I got one more section, I think. My ex-wife-to-be. When I came back to work after school at Parkside, my ex-wife was of course working there, my ex-wife to be, I mean. Her daughter was there at school at eight years old. I'd swing kids by their hands around, which is good for helping them develop reading abilities and fun for them and me. I'd look around on the playground to see if she were there on a frequent basis, paying enough attention to just to keep the kids safe yet always wanting her to be close. I wasn't fully aware of it at the time. Didn't get my hopes up with a married woman, but I felt this undeniable tie to her. We would go to this ice cream parlor on Terravel Street, close to the school named Lick and Lick and Lick and Lick and Ice Cream. <laughs> Later, she told me, she liked how I kicked up and crossed my leg when we sat at the table of lit, that it was sexy. I had to be careful, I felt, not to let the director of the center know we were becoming attracted to each other. That's an understatement. We were falling in love. Karen said that it was love at first sight for her, and I think it probably was for me, too. And just as I have said, I, I thought she was un unavailable. So. I man we managed to get through this time until I decided to leave and began babysitting my four-year-old nephew whose mother uh, was taking a big on uh, a big job and needed help. He was a demanding child and I did most of the sitting in, in uh, Carol's apartment where she, as a serious alcoholic, allowed Sean to do insane things like spread sugar with spoon on her sofa. So, I was about to take on a regular part-time job with my nephew, in addition to my demanding nine-month-a-year part-time preschool a job. The going away present uh, for me from Karen was an evening at a place called Shamrock Bar on Lincoln Avenue at 9th Avenue, which still exists at that location over three decades later. We got pretty drunk on Guinness, the great Irish beer 
that are wound up on the sidewalk, kissing and kissing and kissing. Mm -hmm. I was in St. Stephen. Buford, ladies and gentlemen. And now, this gentleman has been coming here for a while, and he has become a real regular around here. And I'd like to think of him as the now sacred grounds resident comic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Colin Holtz. Right on. Oh, man. All right, great news, everybody. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter how much you don't look like him if you have glasses people are gonna tell you ah oh, you look just like harry potter yeah. <laughs> great news because like i have outgrown that stage in my life finally i got my very first you look just like where is waldo <laughs> yes now i'm waiting for you look just like bill gates or you know somebody successful <laughs> instead of like some Where's Waldo college student. Reagan. I don't like to get any big ideas um, because I am afraid of being crushed to death by a giant light bulb. <laughs> oh, these ideas are too big. Uh, I used to work at a medical marijuana dispensary and uh, while I was working there, I, it made me want to go back to church. Mm -hmm. But not because like, I would get high and I was like, oh man, there's got to be something more out there. But because a whole bunch of priests would come in and buy weed from us all the time. <laughs> it just kind of makes sense, because like, you've got to be high to think the body of Christ sounds good, you know? <laughs> Chowing down. Candlebox. <laughs> It was a work-free drug place. Took a while. But I would be like the. I don't. I don't really enjoy going to church though. Like, and I realized that my reasons for not liking church haven't changed since I was a kid. Like I haven't thought about anything more to justify a reason not to go other than it gets in the way of like watching cartoons. <laughs> it's just terrible. I would be the worst person. Like if your goal was to take down Christianity, I would be the worst person to have on your side. Like I don't enjoy church or like religion, but I'm I'm like the hipster of the Bible. Oh god. Like I haven't read it. But the fact that it's a number one bestseller makes me think it's probably full of bullshit. Like, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Well, uh, while I was here living here in San Francisco, like the last year, um, I've had three different people try and mug me. And the most recent example that I have is I was sitting at the bus stop, and when I looked up, this guy was standing over me. And he said, yo, give me your phone. And then I looked up at him and I said, uh, no, <laughs> right? Because I worked hard for my phone. And if I worked hard for my phone, then so do you. Like, I'm not going to make your job any easier for you. See how dedicated you are to this chosen career path of yours. Mm -hmm. Then instead of doing anything about it, he just said it again. He said, yo, give me your phone. And then I ignored him by looking at my phone. And he went away. I like to imagine he got home and his girlfriend was there. She was like, how was your night, honey? He's like, nobody respects me at work. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, if you wanted to rob somebody with some authority, maybe you should have brought a gun. Or like become a banker or something. Right. Banker. Uh, yeah, dude. Oh, and then this one dude, I came home, I lived with like ten other people. <laughs> 
It's the truth. I live with 10 other people, and uh, I came home to a house party, and in the kitchen, there was this dude that was just taking food out of our fridge and putting it in a grocery bag. <laughs> and it's like communal food that we all share it was gonna be gone by breakfast. And I was like, hey dude, what are you doing? And when he couldn't justify it, he pointed to my shirt that had a Native American on it. And he said, uh -huh. I'm Native American. Like, you know, the fact that we stole shit from them so long ago justifies him stealing our shit. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So I was like, I was playing along. I was like, all right, dude, friggin, where are you from? He's from New Mexico. It's like, all right, so you're probably Pueblo or some shit, right? Yeah. Like a newsflash, dude, you're out of your territory, man. Like, this is the <laughs> Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Historically, do you know what would happen if you were caught stealing another tribe's food? <laughs> I have no idea either, <laughs> but I can guarantee you they would not politely be asking you to put it back in the fridge <laughs> because they didn't have fridges. <laughs> what do you mean, aw? <laughs> fridges weren't invented until like the 1900s. They definitely did not have fridges. It's historically accurate. <laughs> um, What the hell is Canada doing with their bacon on our Hawaiian pizza? I think we got to take our pineapples and beat them back across the border, you know? Friggin' dole out the punish. <laughs> Watched a lot of Godzilla movies recently, and uh, one thing I noticed is that the lips don't match the words. Then I noticed that the lips move first and the words come after. And I realized, oh my gosh, the Japanese can speak English at Mach 3. <laughs> so, you guys ever seen those yards with the shrubs fenced in, you know? Not the whole yard, just the shrubs. Like, the owner's thinking, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> if anybody wants to steal you, you're going to have to climb over this fence. <laughs> Or knocks for shrubs. Uh, I've been getting hit on by a lot of cougars recently, which is really strange because there's only a short amount of time in your life where you can say you've been getting hit on by cougars. As you get older, they just become women. Like, and this one lady, she showed me a picture of her kids, and they were only a year younger than I am. And her son could clearly beat the shit out of me. <laughs> like, in order for him to have an excuse to beat me up, I would have had to have slept with his mom. And at that point, I feel like I've already won. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, who's your daddy? <laughs> 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 if, you, if you search for cougars, on the internet, like all of the articles show up, and they'll say like from Canada to South America, it's a stock and ambush predator, and obviously they're talking about the cat, <laughs> right? But then when you click on the images, it's just a bunch of old blonde women in bikinis, <laughs> which is gonna make for some really weird second grade science reports. <laughs> like, why do you have a picture of Heather? attached to your report on cougars. If you want to get a picture of an actual cougar, you have to Google mountain lions. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of my friends, she's obsessed with serial killers. Like, she loves serial killers. And one day she said, hey, Colin, did you hear about that serial killer who's about to be executed? Apparently, he was racist. Like, that's what she was upset about. And I thought, oh my god, I need to marry this girl! Because she'll let me get away with murder. Good. So, um, a lot of people in my family have cancer. Like, a lot of people in my family have cancer. 
And at family gatherings, my relatives will come up to me and they're like, hey, Colin, you must be getting a lot of great material. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Because everybody loves jokes about cancer patients. <laughs> so I have to explain to them that a joke is the shit that life hands you, plus time equals humor. When they say, hey, make jokes about us. But all that comes out is, probably not. <laughs> in your lifetime. <laughs> Won't be too long. <laughs> and if, if you're still not laughing at that joke, dude, uh, you totally should, because it's what they would have wanted. <laughs> if you're still not laughing at that joke, uh, I could really use your support right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. Mr. Natural. Colin Holt, ladies and gentlemen. Colin Holt. And now I'd like to welcome you to the stage, Steph. Where are you, Steph? Oh, yeah. Did he go outside? Big entrance. Ta-da! <laughs> Big entrance. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the stage, Steph. I can perform without my guitar. I haven't done it before. And I can I have a uh, guitar now. I have a two hundred dollars one to get it at. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh man, that was a virgin dress. Until that moment. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, put back the wall. I'll do some. Uh, I'll, I'll. I only steal. You know, I heard this rumor about Robin Williams that. In the early days, he was around here, pretty much biting everybody, everybody's jokes in the whole comic scene. This is the rumor I heard. Maybe an urban myth. I have no idea. I met the man that morning. I was woken up by a guy uh, who told me that he would wake up when he was a kid. And his parents would be smoking pot with the guy in Sausalito. Um, and I'm over here at this is this is taking place at the other Coal Valley, Coal Valley, which is Hayes Valley here in. And um, it's a great place. You know, uh, why today I, I came out of the closet and admitted I had a favorite cafe. And, uh, well, you can go to my YouTube site to find out more. It's called Step, I call it Step and Chan, the YouTube site. All I do is covers. I just have a passion for covers. I realize I do Bob Marley covers, I have a passion for them. And I do Peter Tosh covers, I have a passion for them. He was a gun to liberation as he died in the fight. Um, probably by, hmm, famous assassination to check out Hugo Chavez and Che Rivera. Che Rivera, most famous for what, getting killed by who? Us, the United States CIA, intelligence, United States intelligence. That's who killed Che Rivera. That's why he's on people's t-shirts. Okay. So about modern cover time, or that I'm feeling at the moment, uh, I am a street musician. I have an eldest brother and a mother. They're Gemini's. Two faces, two stars. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, I love them. They're my family. They're especially my brother. I don't know, favorite fight. Anyhow, my mom, a psych nurse, immediately jumped on the conversation about Robin Williams. Uh, well, he, he was on uh, that Prozac. And it worked pretty much for everybody. She's she's a psych nurse. She worked 30 years in the recovery field. Um, and uh, it worked for most everybody, but some people just make them suicidal after yeah, a while. Impressive. Uh, I am rather vehemently anti uh, of psychoactive drugs that are prescribed by these, by these pharmaceutical companies in general. I don't think they have a very good success rate. I've seen people get accidents all shaky on them and depressants. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, 
So, so, uh, so my eldest brother, the German, I said, quite positive song. There's only one or two. Okay, when Mike Gruber killed himself, I was a doomer already. And I got the term kind of from listening to Mike Gruber for you filling me in and that. Um, but there's only, oh, okay, which brings me to the song. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
the cookie is like uh, something. Is, uh, so I, I, I'm real partial to this collaboration came together. Is uh, Waylon and Willie is what I type in what my YouTube search engine box. You should type Stephen Chan. You can find my favorite videos there. Uh, I stayed on Facebook for a while because Mike Rupert had only uh, 5,000 friends.
going into the Montgomery Tunnel, uh, and she said, God damn it, I've got to be next to people. <laughs> I'm going underground where the Morlock live, you know. So, kind of, yeah. so it's nice to be in town this whole weekend. I guess she's coming by Saturday to say hello. And it turns out that she's working on a new TV show that she's thinking of doing in which she's going to play. It's going to be about an open mic. No. Yeah, so she wants to come to talk to me about what goes on yeah. between and after, you know, because that's where the story will be. Yeah, yeah. You know, about, about what everybody really does in their spare time between, between open mics. Yeah. Really excited about it. I, I saw her on uh, Last Comic Stand. Yeah, she just did, yeah, she was uh, doing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, judge thing. That was hard. She said that was fucking hard. Yeah. Well, first of all, you have to think of something to say. It's t tough on the comedians because, yeah. well, like what happened this time is um, Rodman, she said, was so hot and it looked like he was going to be voted off. But it was such an even thing that normally when they get rid of somebody, they just had all three of them go at it again. Yeah. And they still couldn't make up their mind to the last Damn. guy. So they had him do an a eyeball to eyeball sort of comic off. Yeah. And they've never done that before. And it oh, was shit. just amazing to watch these three comics try their best to cut the shit out of each oh, other God. and still oh, be God. right, you know? Oh. And she said, you know, when I went home, I sat and thought about it. These guys have to come up with like 40 routines. Yeah. Like 40 fucking routines yeah. off the top of your head, you know? It's like, that's a lot. That's, crazy. that's a lot of comedy, you know, back to back with other comedians. But, you know, so I have to say, Rodman won. Which was interesting. So you know that was that was that was nice to see because he's um, he reminds me so much of a kind of insane uh, hip hop version of of of, um, of um, um, Jello. Um, um, what's his name? J E L O. Uh, what's his name? Cosby. Uh, he kind of comes off like the everyman Cosby, I, um, and then just says off the wall shit. I only got to see a couple clips, but I'll have to look this guy up. Oh, uh, he's really he's Rodman. fucking brilliant, yeah. And there's another guy that was in the competition called Mickey, a kid who's like really shy and very embarrassed sounding. And he's got a little kid's voice and great big puppy dog eyes. That man is one of the funniest people I've ever Scene. He had to improvise a thing about a joke he did about black people, and uh, and ending with uh, Thomas Jefferson's you know girlfriend kind of thing, and it was just so hilarious. It was unfucking believable. What these guys have to pull off off the top of their head yeah. with no 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 <laughs> no net at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you if you do poorly, you know they're going to use that footage.